Hello and welcome to Fairtube. In August 2019, we started our campaign as a joint venture between the YouTubers Union and the EIG Metal with great global feedback from creators, journalists, trade unions and also from the YouTube community. In this video, we want to do three things. First, we would like to look back at our original demands and shed some light on what actually happened. I can already say that we were able to achieve many things, but also a lot remains to be done. Second, we want to inform you about a very major step for our movement. We are taking Fairtube from just an informal internet movement into a full-blown registered association, giving us a whole range of legal and factual opportunities. Third, we would like to introduce you to the team here at Fairtube, a small group of very dedicated people that are working very hard for the rights of crowd workers such as YouTube creators. Remember our first video from August 2019? Christiane Benner, second chairwoman of IG Metal, and myself confronted YouTube with five clear demands in order to improve the situation of YouTube creators. Now, here we are again, looking back to one and a half years of our cooperation. Christiane, are you happy with our achievements so far? Yes, we made a great impact. The amount of press and feedback from all sides exceeded my wildest expectations. So that was clearly a bombastic success. And I'm very proud of the fact that IG Metall supported this struggle. It doesn't happen very often that a time-honored organization rich in tradition like my union tackles new challenges so generously and open-mindedly, actually supporting people who might never be able to join IG Metall. Decent and fair work, also in the internet economy, is one of our core values. Regarding the factual progress, I have to say it was a bit of a roller coaster ride. I agree. Google, the mother company of YouTube, first sent us this long letter with an invitation to a meeting at their Berlin headquarters. And then they came back to us a few days before the meeting saying that no YouTubers would be allowed to participate. They said they do not recognize the YouTubers union as a union. Yeah, a meeting about the problems and issues of YouTubers without any YouTubers in the room. Yeah, that was weird. We asked the YouTubers union members in a poll. They were clear about this. Cancel the meeting then, which we did. We were ready to struggle with YouTube. The lawyers kicked into action. Thousands of registered letters from angry creators hit the San Bruno YT headquarters. And the press criticized YouTube heavily for that. Exactly. We were preparing ourselves for a long conflict. But then they carved in, at least informally. Yes, indeed. High-ranking officers from YouTube contacted us and we established a nice communication channel. We were able to present our demands in a sober and goal-oriented way. And they saw the reasoning behind this. Things changed. So let us go back to our original demands and look at where we stand, shall we? Sure. Our first big demand was transparency. In fact, the YTU members clearly said, this one is most important. And what a horrible situation it was. Creators were tortured by algorithms nobody understood. Everybody felt that subscription system was in shambles, with notifications not working. YouTube did not even acknowledge this. It was pure frustration. And we were able to prove this by conducting a massive poll amongst creators and users. The great majority confirmed that the system did not work. And guess what? YouTube was able to follow up on our feedback and did find all those bugs. And they fixed them. They then updated the analytics tool accordingly. So now creators can actually see how many notifications were sent out and how many people watched a new video because of them. They also started to explain the algorithms very extensively on Creator Insider. So things are better now. But there is still a lot of things to be done. Exactly. We are still far away from full transparency. Our next demand was clear rules. That one was so apparent that it was even almost funny to even mention it. But in fact, 
YouTube was hiding behind a set of very general, vague rules that they interpreted any way they liked. Exactly. They said nothing shocking, but failed to explain what exactly would be shocking enough to justify censoring. I mean, some people find it shocking to see people wearing socks and sandals. Others find pictures normal that only few people can bear. Here, we did work with YouTube intensively. I was personally present in several long online meetings about new and better rules. The result is very positive. Now the rules are about 10 times more elaborate and many examples make it clear what is okay and what is not okay. And that was exactly what we were asking for. Yes, this demand has been fulfilled, I think. But we need to keep working on this as the rules are very dynamic. What about demand number three, real humans? Uh, a bit shadow and light here. <laughs> People complained about unfair demonetizations by the bots. We were able to make them improving the monetization rules and creators are now able to reach YouTube support people on Twitter in order to discuss unjust decisions with real humans. YouTube employees, even high-ranking managers, started to appear in Creator Insider videos, came out of the hiding and answered questions directly. But on the other hand, YouTube sent a lot of human raters, that is how they call their censors, home due to COVID. Now the bots have taken over once again, obviously deleting twice as many videos as the human raters. This will get better after the pandemic is over. But actually, I fail to see why the raters can't work from their homes. Millions of other businesses prove every day. Home office works, we learned. And security issues can be solved as well. That is true. Next demand, arbitration. The idea, we want a way to appeal unfair decisions. While we failed in establishing something formally and official, we kind of wriggled ourselves in. Exactly. Now that we have access to YouTube's high-ranking officers, we can bring obvious cases to their attention. We were able to help many creators this way. We brought hijacked channels back to their rightful owners. We had deleted videos reinstated. We fixed glaring mistakes regarding unjust demonetizations. Effective, sure, but not what we wanted. We need to work on this. In fact, we only just started, but a foot in the door is better than expected. On to our demand number five, participation. We want YouTube to include the creators into the decision-making process. Should be no problem between two partners. But the situation was horrible at the beginning. YouTube did what they wanted, changing important things without even telling creators. We would learn about such changes the hard way. But that changed. They started to ask the creators how we feel about changes they consider before the decision have been made. They asked us how we felt about the new studio beta and they did not release it until the great majority of our members said that it is time. They asked us about the removal of the community captions before they decided. They even joined the YouTubers Union Facebook group with their official page, 84 million followers. Some people say they are now a YTU member, just like all of us. <laughs> Not by a long shot plus. Just when we thought things are going into the right direction, they suddenly changed the terms again, without prior notice and without asking the creators. Yes, they did it again. Now they will put ads on channels that are not monetized, so they can keep 100% of the ad money instead of splitting with the creator. Yes, and the creators get nothing, extremely unfair. This is bad news for the monetized partners too. Their videos will see fewer ads and they will get less money. YouTube simply increased their share to the great disadvantage of the creators. I think this is unacceptable. It is, yeah. That's not how you should treat a partner. Truth is, they will get away with this as long as there's no real counterbalance. We have to act. Remember all the positive things that happened informally and we have not really established any clear rights for the creators, but that is necessary. Otherwise, creators remain forever unprotected and vulnerable. 
But as a loose internet movement, we won't be able to take the next major step. For YouTube, we are just a Facebook group, not a true organization. But that will change. In fact, it changes now. Yes, my friends, here comes the big announcement, the biggest step this campaign has taken so far. You are witnessing true internet history unfolding. Fairtube is no longer just an internet movement. But a fully incorporated registered association. After many months of preparation, we are launching both the organization and the all new amazing website. No longer will anyone be able to say that the YouTubers Union is just a Facebook group. Fairtube is an organization which is formally registered in Germany, open to everybody who wants to improve the working conditions on platforms like YouTube. An extremely capable and dedicated team will manage the new organization, ready to unite thousands of crowd workers, YouTubers, platform workers. We are here to help you. We cordially and formally ask you to join our ranks and stand with us against the overwhelming power of big tech. Join us today. Together we will achieve amazing things. Here is an excerpt from our mission statement. Fairtube stands for fairness, transparency, accountability, dialogue, freedom from discrimination and democratic participation for platform workers. We mean it. We demand these things and we won't stop fighting until these very goals have been achieved for real. But we want to do more than that. We also want to form an association that provides really valuable help for making our members more successful in their jobs. We have a boatload of ideas how to achieve that. And with your support, we will have the power to get things done. Jörg, why don't you introduce the Fairtube team? and let them present our vision. Sure. Hi, everyone. As Jörg mentioned, we would like to introduce some members of our team to you. Our daily tasks uh, include political work on improving the labor conditions for platform workers and content creators, as well as community and social media management and website maintenance. My name is Maria, and I'm very excited to be part of uh, Fairtube and interact with our community. I manage the social media accounts and I'm involved in the political part of our work. You're very welcome to join us uh, through our website where you can also read about our mission, accomplishments and services. We also set up Instagram and Twitter accounts where we keep you up to date uh, with our activity and current legislation on uh, platform work and uh, where we interact with you and hear what you have to say. We have a Facebook group too where our members uh, can share their experiences and get answers to the questions. And now I pass the word to Elena. Thank you, Maria. Hey, I'm Elena and I'm the student assistant of this project. I'm working closely with Maria on the social media content and I'm supporting the team in its political work. To me, Fairtube is an amazing initiative with a very strong community spirit and I'm proud to be able to support its mission. Now I'm looking forward to get in touch with all of you and I'm giving the word to Beriman. It's time to introduce yourself now. Hello everyone, my name is Berevan and I'm in charge of the whole administration of this project. I'm a huge fan of YouTube, but I can also see the problems content creators are facing and would like to help improving the platform conditions. So, if you have any questions regarding your membership, I'm happy to help you. Next, let me introduce Fairtube's chairwoman, Vanessa Barth. Hi, I'm Vanessa. I've been working at IG Metall for almost 20 years and in 2012 Christian and I listened to a talk by Jan Marco Leimeister, business informatics professor in St. Gallen about crowdsourcing and we knew from the spot this is important and since that day I'm on this very inspiring, very often pretty challenging journey into the internet-based world of labor and I'm really looking forward to this new chapter. And now I would like to introduce you to my dear friend and colleague, Robert Fuß. Thanks, Vanessa. And hello, everyone. My name is Robert Fuß, and I've been working for IG Metall for almost 30 years now. And back in 2019, I would not have thought that Fairtube would be such a great success. And for me, this proves once again, 
If we stick together, we can achieve a lot. So, please join us. And now, I pass the word to Irina. Thank you, Robert. My name is Irina Kretschmer, and I'm an author and copywriter, mostly on crowdfunding platforms. Through my research and participation in discussions on gig economy with experts and politicians, I gained a lot of experience in this field. And I'm very glad to be able to support the Fairtube team with my expertise. This new form of work is extremely interesting, if it is designed fairly. There is still a lot to be done here, but I think we are on a good way. With Fairtube, we create the opportunity for platform workers to organize themselves and to pool their strengths. This is a very important from my point of view. Now it's turn for Johannes to introduce himself. Hi creators, my name is Johannes Seller. I'm a lawyer and research associate at the Hugo Sinsheim Institute for Labor and Social Law in Frankfurt am Main. And currently uh, working on my PhD thesis on collective rights in the platform economy. I got to know the FedHube initiative when Jörg gave his first lecture on YouTube is Union at the IG Metall. As I myself have a great interest in YouTube and the platform economy, I attended the meeting and have been there from the very beginning. I gave legal support to FedHube in his actions and campaigns against YouTube for better working condition for the YouTube creators. I am very happy with how everything has turned out. As you can see, the effort were worth it. As a part of the FedHube team, I am very excited about the new task FedHube will be facing and looking forward to contact and exchange with the YouTube community. See you at FedHube. Now go and join us because we would love to have you as our member. And of course, follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. A great team for sure. Keep in mind, none of us draws any form of income from Fairtube that is actually clearly stated in the bylines. Fairtube is not a profit-oriented organization and we will publish our entire financial records once a year. We aren't here for the money. We are here to make history. Do you want to help? That would be just great. The new Fairtube website is now online. Go, check it out. Join us right now. For a year from now, membership is free of charge. Until then, we will discuss with our members a future membership fee. You can join us with just a few mouse clicks. Each new member makes us stronger. Last year, many of you offered to make a donation. It was never possible, but now it is. We will need some money, not for paying ourselves, simply for covering the cost. In the future, we may ask you to help us paying for lawsuits and such, but we will do so when the need arises. We also plan many more activities that we can only do if we find volunteers for things like channel breakdowns, collaboration and mentoring programs, just to name a few. Thanks for watching. Get up, stand up and see you soon. Thanks and bye bye.